Here we go. Ready? Oh, he's better than me. Yeah. All right, guys. The next step that I need to do before I can start to carve all this stuff out is I need to get the top of the fillet referenced on the top of um, the double okay now this is this is the pattern to the bottom of it and you can see that this line here that line is the um, line of the drawer front now I just can't take the drawer front and put it down there and trace it because of what happens is um, the fillet needs to be projected out another sixteenth of an inch eight eighth of an inch or whatever right so you see all these points here these are the center points that we registered when we were making all these curves. So what I had to do is I had to transfer these lines onto the doubler. And then you can see right here, I don't know if you can see this. You can see that this, this is how much reveal I want to have on the, um, on the, uh, between the drawer front and the, and the doubler. So I'm just going to show you how I transfer all, these, all this information onto the piece and then how I carve it off from there, okay? So this is like the first step that I need to do before I can shape all these interior corners. So, check it out. Here's the double, right? And you can see that this corner, see how it's round right here? And this corner here is rounded. What they want to do is they want to be nice and crisp. You can see that I put a line in there. Let's see if I can see that line. Okay, there you go. You can see the line, right? This line here. What I did was I took my straight edge and I just carried it over from there, okay? And I ran it past. And then from here, I took my, my dividers, compass, whatever you want to call it, and this line here, uh, there's a line that I've already got registered. I transferred it from the pattern. You see? This line right here. That's the line that it was on the pattern. I just measured over and, and what I needed, what I wanted to do was just turn this arc a little bit. So I turned this arc and I got my center point. So this transition point between these two angles is where I need to make a, a tight corner. And then I did the same to this one. You know, I have a, I have a, uh, a mark. What the hell? It's right here. So I marked it. And I, and I swung my arc, and I got the, the transition point again. And again, I, ca I just carried this line over with my uh, straight edge. And the same with, with this interior one. But this interior one, the, the pivot point is out here. So I just grabbed another piece of half inch, and I set the divider, and I just swung the arc. Now this one is just a square cut, and that was a square cut. And I'm just going to show you. I've already done one side. You see now I have this corner is nice and straight. See how straight that is and see how tight this corner is in the top. Nice crisp interior corners. See that? So from here, this one and that one. So once I get the top corner and it's nice and tight, I just kind of drew a line from the interior corner, I mean the, the one on the bottom to the one on the top. And what I need to do is I need to shape this until it's a nice crisp line coming through here. And to be honest with you, I'm a little nervous to do it. I haven't done it in a long time. But I know that this line is in there already. And as long as I just remove the same amount of material from both sides, then I'll just have a nice, cream, uh, clean, crisp line. So. That's that. So I got a bunch of lines to do transfer all those lines and I'm going to start carving it. Once I get going and start carving it, I'll let you know how to make out. Alrighty? Peace. Now uh, fellas, check that out. Now you can see the line right here. Let's see if I can get, get, get closer. That's the line that I carved, okay? And it wasn't that tough to do once I got going. You know, once I got this point and that point, it was just a matter of trying to remove this material here and here evenly. 
Uh, you can see how this is just a little too flat, but you're never going to notice it really. Just I notice it from this angle. Actually, I'm looking at it through the uh, viewfinder on the camera, and it looks awesome. So, these are the corners that I carved out yesterday. This interior one was pretty tough. This one and that one, they took a little bit of time. But you know what? This line is in there, guys. And if you just gingerly approach that corner, it's just going to appear. And that's, that's how it is. You know what I'm saying? So, these are all the corners I did, right? Now you can see how much material I need to take out. I mean, it's pretty evident now. I mean, you see this one, it's, it's totally clean. It's got that nice line to it. And look at this one. It's completely rounded over. Um, you know, this would be a dead giveaway of, a, of, of a, like a machine piece of work. But since it's done by hand, you're going to see that this is going to be a nice, clean, crisp line. Same with this one and that one. So maybe I'll, uh... so that's all I have left to do, Dick. So maybe I can just show you how to do it. See if I can set this camera up somewhere. All right, let me give it a shot. See how this goes, guys. Now I just have a couple of tools here and there. I got a back bent and I have, uh, you know, just regular chisels. You know, I got all sorts of crap all over my bench. So what I want to do is I just want to kind of come in here. Now you don't want to go too hard with this because you'll really, really mess it up. And I don't even have to touch any material down here at the bottom. It's just kind of here at the top. Because you can see that the sweep of the bottom is already perfect. And I just need to clean this up because I only changed a little bit of this top. And you know what? There's probably somebody out there saying, that ain't the way to do it. But, you know, maybe you guys can write in and tell me how to do this. I'm just winging it. I'm no expert. Well, yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm the man. Who's better than me, Dave? Fellas? I'm the best. So, that's it. I just wish I had to knew which tools to just use, you know what I'm saying? Lance can do this stuff like in his sleep. Can you, I don't even know if my hands are in the way or what. See up here, you can see that this is a total flat here and it's a little thick in here and there so I kind of need to just take this crap out. So it'd be nice if I had a chisel that was set at that angle and I just swoosh it in there, but it, it's impossible. I mean, you would have to make that. So you just try to get close with the back bend. But you can see that line starting to come in now, huh guys? It's a little beat up and a little rough from the tools, but that's definitely a transitional line now instead of being a rounded over like I did on the inside of the other one. So it's getting there. Now even a bit with a little bit of sandpaper, it'll be more... Uh, prevalent. That's close, huh? See that line, how it just kind of appeared? And you can really see that it's a straight line now. Now, um, it's still a little rough, you know what I'm saying? So I'll probably just come in here. You can see that it's still a little beat up right in here. But, I mean, it's really, it's, it's right in there, guys. And you just kind of have to trust that it's in there. These are the things that were really, really difficult for me to, to learn, and, and a lot of times I still have a hard time seeing what this stuff looks like inside the wood, you know? Uh, I don't have much experience at carving, so it's a real, real challenge to me. But, uh, because just the tools and just a lot of things you need to, to, to know to be able to do, even like a simple inside corner, is a lot of, is a lot, you know? And I haven't mastered it at all. I'm just kind of winging it. But I'm pretty good for a rookie. Not bad for a rookie, Dave. I don't care what anybody says. 
I'm the best. There's no one in my shop telling me any different. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, homie? You know, a lot of people would cheat and they'd scratch a line in here. But that's not what I would like to do. I just want to get the material out of there. And it's only a little bit of material. I mean, just a little bit, Dave, can make it or break it. You know what I'm saying? So you really got to... Look at me, I'm shaking from all the coffee I drank this morning. Like that little piece? If it breaks off the other side of the corner, it's going to look like... <laughs> So this is the challenge, Bill. Right to there. Oh yeah. I think that's it, guys. And that's it, fellas. See if I can get a good view of it. That is a pretty sweet interior corner. Huh? I'll zoom in on it so you guys can try to see what I see. That's it, guys. So, that's how you do the interior corners. Just a little bit at a time. You know, in, in. Get that line nice and tight. It should be sweet. So I got like two or three more to do, and then I'll show you how I attach it to the um, to the writing surface. This piece is very, very significant, and it's a it's a milestone. When I build this kind of crap, right, you need to set obtainable milestones and little goals because this thing takes so long. It's like friggin' eight months, and it gets to you. It took me like five months before I could even get this thing kind of half together. Well, not that long. Whatever. It seemed like five months. So just little, little like victories, like the writing surface is in and, and I got the double going in. <clears throat> and then I'll be able to cut all the little dados and then before you know it, all the pigeonhole assembly is going to be in. And that's when you start to get a lot of motivation and momentum when you build such a piece. You just have to stay on point, Dave. Just stay on point. Keep your eye on the ball, you know what I mean? But it gets pretty challenging. I'm in here Saturdays and Sundays, friggin' nights. I think about it all day long, so. Whatever. All right, man. That was pretty cool. You can edit all this crap. I'm just yapping. <laughs> I had too much coffee, buddy.